Well, now we're ready to make another crust, one of my favorites, puff pastry. Now, this is tricky, but not as tricky as you think it is. And I think you're gonna really enjoy this. Now, I've got my flour already in the work bowl of this tabletop mixer. And we're going to incorporate our butter in there right away until it resembles small marbles in there. So I'm gonna turn this on. We'll throw the salt in. Get that mixed in there. Thank you, Jeannie. Let me turn that down a little bit. There we go. And why don't we start adding our butter. And I'm holding back on the motor because I don't want the flour to go everywhere as it begins to take in the pieces of cold butter. As it begins to work it, I can increase the speed. But right now, you can see there it's burping flour. We don't want that to happen, so we'll turn it down just a touch. Thanks. That's beautiful. Now, what makes puff pastry puff pastry is what happens when you cook it. It actually puffs up. And because of the envelope folding technique that you'll see when we actually work it on the surface of our marble here, is that we put layers of butter in between the layers of pastry. So much so, in fact, that it rises in leaves. The French call this pastry mille foy, which is a thousand leaves in translation. Now, I wanna lower this and let you see that what we have there are those marbles. See that? And now, we can reattach raise our bar here and ever so slowly turn this on. Now, we're going to add water and lemon juice together. And we're gonna use that to bind our dough. Now, that's a lot more acid than the last dough we took a look at, which just had the cream and the egg yolk in there. And remember, we learned before that acid helps to keep the dough tender. So this dough, because of the lemon juice, is gonna be very tender. And that's one of the hallmarks of puff pastry elegant, tender dough. And right about now, we stop it when it's starting to gather itself together and still looks kind of chunky. And we're gonna take this off and let you see this. There is our nice, chunky, buttery puff pastry dough, right? Now, the recommendation here is to gather this up just like we've done some of those other doughs, wrap it in a little bit of plastic wrap, and let it rest in the refrigerator for a minimum of half an hour. You want it chilled so you can spread the butter throughout and the dough itself has a chance to rest. Here we've got a piece that we've already had in the refrigerator for over half an hour and it's nice and chilled. And Jeannie is gonna roll this out using the envelope folding technique. And Jeannie, do you want to explain that to folks? Well, what you want to do is set your piece of dough on, the, on your rolling surface, and once again, tap it out. I like to start with an elongated shape because mm -hmm. it's easier for me to make an envelope that way. Mm -hmm. You want to work quickly here. Because so there's the, so much butter in there. Because there's so much butter, and you can actually just see it streaking through mm -hmm. there, can't you? Mm -hmm. And that's a good sign. That's what you're looking for. That's, that's what you want. That's how you're going to get all those la layers. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I've got it into a rough re rectangle here. And now I'm going to fold it in thirds. And it doesn't matter if you go front to back or back to front. You just mm -hmm. want to make sure you have an envelope shape. So I'll pick it up like that. Maybe brush off a little of the excess flour because that will make it a little bit tough later on. Fold over the bottom, over the top. Mm. Once again, brush off the flour. Then I'll pick it up and turn it so that the seam is now on the side instead of facing me. Mm -hmm. So you... You're going to repeat this process three more times, Andrew. Mm -hmm. I can tell the dough is getting a little bit soft now, mm -hmm. but I think I can get one more turn out of it. Mm -hmm. And then I think it's probably time to put it into the refrigerator yeah. and let it rest. 
I like to go two and then into the refrigerator and then bring it out and do two more once it's cold again myself. Now, Jeannie, this is called quick puff pastry, this technique that we're using. Is it that much less complex of a chore than standard puff pastry? And is there really any difference in your experience as a pastry chef? Well, I think there is, is a flavor and texture difference between the classic and the quick puff. But the, the classic is really an endeavor. And you end up taking dough without butter in it and then folding actually mm -hmm. a piece of butter inside to enclose it like an envelope. Mm -hmm. And then you repeat the same process, but you do it six more times mm -hmm. so you get many more layers. Because mm -hmm. I find in my kitchen that this works just fine for all the purposes that I use it for, which are for quick tarts, like the ones I'm gonna show some folks, or for savory items like the tops of pot pies or beef wellingtons. That's right. Now you're saying before we always make sure to brush that flour off because adding more flour makes it tough, even just that little bit. That right? little bit. You might as well take that extra time to ensure mm -hmm. that you have a great product. Mm -hmm. And at this point, it's ready to go into the refrigerator to rest before we bring it out again and do two, two more, more folds. That's so right. So it's a total of four turns. That's correct. Wonderful. So off I go. Okay. Now, once that's done, we can cut that puff pastry into any size that we'd like. And I've done some small ones here, and you can see we laid out that big one. What I like to do is do little Napoleon-style desserts with this. It's very, very simple because I just bake it off. And you can see, actually, you can see those little leaves that are in there. I mean, too many to even count. It's just absolutely beautiful. And now all I'm going to do is slice that open very carefully. Remember what we said before about that lemon juice helping to make such a tender dough. And all of that butter, as we've learned before working with some of our other doughs, makes such a tender crust. Well, this is the tenderest of them all. I'm going to put this down. I'm going to put my bottom piece down there and my top piece just there to let it rest. Now, the quickest thing that I can do with a tart like this is just a dollop of whipped cream and just a little fall of berries on there. Now these berries I've macerated with a little bit of Grand Marnier and a little bit of sugar. That sugar and Grand Marnier help break down the berries just a little bit and you can see it starts to bring out some of their juices there. You can see in the bottom of that bowl. And then all I need to do is perch that top at sort of a jaunty little angle, and I can just serve those and bring those to the table. Now, of course, since we have some leftover pastry cream lying around from our other strawberry tart, one of the other things that I can do is cut this open. Again, just like the last one that we did. And instead of whipped cream, I can do a little pastry cream. And I'm going to be a little more precise here with this one, hence the miniature offset spatula. And I'm just going to bring that perfectly to the edges of this piece of puff pastry. Set that to the side. And then again, same thing. Just spoon out some of my berries and their juices onto there. And just perch that right there. So I have two very different sort of tarts that look the same, just different stuffings in there binding those strawberries. Now, I can also do this family style. Here we have this large piece of puff pastry. Take a big serrated knife, cut it across the middle, and stuff the inside with fruit and filling, and bring it to the table. I could decorate the top with powdered sugar, and slice it family style there, and serve people pieces of this giant puff pastry tart. Either way is absolutely appropriate, individual or family style. Now let's take a look at some of the applications for savory tarts and pies.